Good morning and welcome to the benefits of Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter where you join us for our service of morning prayer on Thursday the 11th of January 2024. My name is John Morrison and I'm standing in for our rector the Reverend Joe Richards and our curate the Reverend Jenny Walpole. In the calendar of the Church of England today we are asked to commemorate Mary Slessor. Mary Slessor was born into a working class Presbyterian family in Aberdeen in 1848. As a child in Dundee she was enthralled by stories of missions in Africa. For years she read diligently as she worked in the mills and in 1875 she was accepted as a teacher for the mission in Calabar, Nigeria. Her fluency in the local language, physical resilience and lack of pretension endeared her to those to whom she ministered. She adopted unwanted children, particularly twins who would otherwise, according to local superstition, have been put to death. She was influential in organising trade and in settling disputes contributing much to the development of the Okayong people with whom she later settled. She died still in Africa on this day in 1915. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising, uh, uh, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Jubilati, a song of joy. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 21, starting at the first verse, is The King puts his trust in the Lord. The King puts his trust in the Lord. The King shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. How gratefully, how greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. For you come to meet him with blessings of goodness and set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asks of you life, and you gave it to him, length of days for ever and ever. The king puts his trust in the Lord. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity, and will make him glad with joy in your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord because of the loving kindness of the Most High. He shall not be overthrown. 
the king puts his trust in the Lord. Your right, your hand shall mark down all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land and their seed from among its inhabitants. The king puts his trust in the Lord. Because they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform, you will put them to flight when you aim your bow at their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. We will make music and sing of your power. The king puts his trust in the Lord. Crown us, O God but with humility and robust with compassion. That as you call us into the kingdom of your Son, we may strive to overcome all evil, but the power of good, and so walk gently on the earth with you, our God, forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 24, starting at the first verse, is, The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of Glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of Glory. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive the blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Lord of hosts, purify our hearts that the King of glory may come in. Your Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Now the serpent was more... Oh, sorry, our second reading is from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal in, in the, that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree, the tree was to be desired, and uh, 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 that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. 
and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the, God, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, till the ground from which he was, uh, to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a sword flashing and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. How canticle is the song of the new Jerusalem. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, the kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon your face. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Our second reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent others, slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, 
one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Then go therefore into the main street and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Who worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. Who worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole world tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. Who let the O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Our gospel canticle is the Benedictus. The song of Zechariah. This is the Christ the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Gracious God, we Thank you for this world and your great creation as we enter this day onto the many tasks that are calling us and that we will accomplish in your name. We pray for the world and its many needs. We look for peace where violence and aggression pervade and in this we pray that the church may have a role in every community to bring con reconciliation amongst warring factions we pray that that very church should be unified in the holy name of God and we look for the priests of the world, particularly in Ukraine and Gaza. And we pray that all those who we know to be sick will be healed, both in body and in mind, with the touch of your love and your grace. We pray for all those 
who have not seen the revelation of Christ and from whom Jesus' glory is hidden. And we pray especially today for all those who travel nas locally, nationally and internationally that they may be protected and loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, our comment. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive, and give us, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for our service of morning prayer this morning. We will be with you this evening at 6 o'clock and again tomorrow morning for Friday's morning prayer. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.